Good evening. Today I will be reading from you Scripture, Ruth, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 17. And my topic for today is Hope in the Midst of Hopelessness. I'll be reading from the NRSV Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, because this is the day that you have made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for your love, your mercies, and your grace. I thank you for your Son and your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, let your Holy Spirit abide in me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Ruth, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 17. No sooner had Boaz gone up to the gate and sat down there than the next of kin of whom Boaz had spoken came passing by. So Boaz said, Come over, friend, sit down here. And he went over and sat down. Then Boaz took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. He then said to the next of kin, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the partial of land that belongs to our kinsman, Amalek. So I thought I might will tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you, st if you will redeem it, Redeem it, buy, but if you will not, tell me, so that I may know, for there is no one prior to you to redeem it. And I come after you, so he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day you acquire the field from the hand of Naomi, you are acquiring Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead man to maintain the deed, dead man's name on his inheritance. At this, the next of kin said, I cannot redeem it for myself without damaging my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one of a sandal, the one took off a sandal and gave it to the other. This was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the next of kin said to Boaz, acquire it for yourself, he took off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have acquired from the hand of Naomi all that belongs to Amalek and all that belongs to Chilon and Malon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, to be my wife, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance in order that the name of the dead man may be cut off from not be cut off from his kindred and from the gates of his native place. Today you are witnesses. Then all the people who were at the gate, along with the elders, said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you produce children in Ephraim and bestow a manor and name in Bethlehem and though the and through the children that the Lord will give you by this young woman may your house be like the house of Perez whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When they came together the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who had not left you, 
this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a re restorer of life and a nurturer of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, have borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Amen. Hope in the midst of hopelessness. This story of Ruth has specific historical context. The day when the judges ruled. The people of the judges was between the initial conquest of Palestine under Joshua and the establishment of the monarchy under Saul. This was a time of moral and political chaos in Israel. There was no strong central gov government or leader. The people repeatedly turned away from God, and neighboring people constantly harassed and evaded the disorganized nation. In Christians' Bible, which derived there from Setuagat and Vulgate, the book of Ruth is found after Judges, for the story is set in the period of the Judges. The placement is thus a chronological one. The placement is a liturgical one. Ruth is local, located in the writings among the five scrolls, each of which is read publicly on a specific festival or day of commemoration. Ruth is associated with the festival of Shabbat, weeks or Pentecost, which marks the end of the harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest. The book of Ruth tells the story of a famine in the land of Bethlehem in Judah and a man named Amalek together with his wife Naomi and two sons, Mephalon and Chilon, went to live for a while in Moab. The city that was named City of Bread was plagued by famine. The word of to live for a while means to wander or to sojourn. Amalek and his wife, his family, were no weekend tourists, but a resident alien, a wanderer, dependent upon the hospitality of home-born mobites for protection and privileges. The place of this wandering was the country of Moab, the fields of Moab. Israel and Moab sustained a love-hate relationship over many years. Amalek died and Naomi was left in a strange land with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women, one named Oprah and the other Ruth. After living there for 10 years, both of Naomi's sons died. Now she is alone in a strange land without her husband and her two sons. Naomi heard that the Lord had come, had come to the aid of the people by providing food, and she decided to return to Bethlehem. The three women were homeless. Their husbands were deceased, and they were widowers in a strange land. When they were on their way to Bethlehem, Naomi told her two daughter-in-laws to go back, each of you, to your mother's house, and may the Lord show kindness to you. May the Lord grant that each of you find rest in the house of another husband. Widow in the ancient world was taken advantage of or ignored because they were poverty-stricken. And this is the reason why God's law provided that the 
nearest or relative of the dead husband should care for the widow. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back to her people, but Ruth clung to Naomi. Proverbs 3, 3. Love and faithfulness are important character qualities. Both involve action as well as attitude. A loving person not only feels love, he or she acts loyal and responsible. A faithful person not only believes in the truth, he or she also works for justice for others. Thoughts are not enough over lies reveal whether we truly love and are faithful. Does your action measure up to your attitude? Let's take a look at Ruth's life. She was, a faith, she was faithful to her mother-in-law to the end. Naomi and Ruth were homeless, returning to Bethlehem in Judah. There, they were of the middle-class society. We can say that they, these two women got lost in the shuffle of homelessness. They stayed invisible by melting into the background. They faced homelessness after an unexpected loss. We can ask the question, who are these homeless women? Some of them are our Naomi and Ruth of today's middle class society. They are the ones that you may see, have seen, lingering alone over a cup of coffee in a restaurant, or relaxing on a sofa in the public library, or washing up in the hotel bathroom. But when the restaurant and library closes, these women don't have homes to go to. They live in cars, vans, abandoned houses, or perhaps storerooms and businesses. They have survived because they are like Naomi of today. They know their way around. They know how to find hotel rooms to bathe, how to find grocery stores, salad bars to nibble from. These women are more than 1,000 who were documented. They were called shadow women. These women are a part of the growing members of society who is like Naomi and Ruth, who thought their lives were safe on, safely on track, but they were displaced through the loss of the death of a spouse and loss of an income. Just how many might be living in this manner? And it is very difficult to assess because the middle-class homeless woman women doesn't frequent shelters. The reason they don't don't because they are proud and it is an embarrassment to visit a shelter. When Naomi had to return to Bethlehem without her husband and two sons, it was an embarrassment because the town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, Call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Ruth loved her mother-in-law Naomi. I want to tell you a story about my mother-in-law. She was a, a nurturer, a very kind-hearted person. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to be telling you a story about Ruth and her mother-in-law and not my mother-in-law. Ruth was a widow and she begged to stay with Naomi. Ruth said these words to Naomi, Do not press me to leave or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. 
Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. When you die, I will die. There will I be buried. This was a declaration of Ruth's loyalty to Naomi. After they returned, Ruth took the initiative and asked Naomi, could she go into the fields and pick up leftover grains? And Naomi gave Ruth permission to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, Ruth found herself working in a field which belonged to Boaz. He arrived and asked the foreman of the harvest, Whose young woman is this? The foreman replied, She is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. Ruth went to the fields and worked steadily from morning to evening, except for a short break and the short rest in the shelter. There is some hope in the midst of hopelessness. Boaz said to Ruth, don't go and glean in another field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with the servant girls. He also told her that he told the men not to bother her, and when she was thirsty, get a drink from the water jar that the men had filled. Ruth bowed her head to the ground and exclaimed, Why have I found favor in your eyes? When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grains and she ate all she wanted. When Boaz discovered who Ruth was, he took several steps to help her because she had been faithful to his relative Naomi. When Naomi advised Ruth to request his protection, Boaz was ready to marry her if the legal complication could be worked out. Boaz took ten elders and they sat at the gate of the city and said to the kingsman redeemer, No, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling a piece of land that belonged to our brother Emelet, and I thought that I might bring this matter to you to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here. The kingsman redeemer said, I will redeem it. There is hope in the midst of hopelessness. Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land for Naomi, and from Ruth the Moabite, you acquired a dead man's widow. At that moment, the king's redeemer said, Then I cannot redeem it, because I might endanger or damage my own estate. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all of the people seated to today, I have bought from Naomi all property of Emelet, Chilon and Milan, and I have acquired Ruth the Moabite, Milan's widow, as my wife. Then the elders and all those at the gate said, We are witness. My Lord, make the woman who is coming into his house, like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. Psalm 113.7 God raises the poor out of the dust to set them with princes. Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. The marriage represents the consummation of redemption on both the people and the land. Then he went into her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave him birth to a son. Ruth was childless during the marriage to Mephalon. Ruth, a mother, the Lord gave her conception for the fruit of the womb is a reward. Psalm 27 verse 3. The same women that were there when Naomi returned to Bethlehem 
in Judah. And she changed her name because she was bitter and disappointed. Were the same women who said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day have not left you without a kinsman redeemer. Ruth is the hero in this story. Without her willingness to abandon her homeland, or without her willingness to beg publicly, or without her willingness to approach Boaz, there would be no celebration. Ruth's life challenges the corrupt value of a sick culture. In Ruth's world, women are more expendable than men. Yet, Ruth proves that a destitute foreign widow can be of more value to Israel than seven of its finest men, sons. Seven sons would indicate the blessings of God, and this was used to describe Ruth the Moabite as better than seven sons were the highest praise. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hope comes from seeing God's perspective. Ruth saw God's perspective. Hope thou in God. There is hope in the midst of hopelessness. Amen. The benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.